Today's episode of the BS Podcast is brought to you by SeatGeek, our presenting sponsor, the only fan-friendly app for buying and selling tickets for sports and music. It's October, late October. Sal, this is the best week. We got lots of fun. World Series, NBA starting, football is dying, and hockey. What mm-hmm. a week. Uh, you need SeatGeek for all of it. Drop your old ticket app. Use one bill for 2016. Buy tickets, enter stadiums on your own phone. Download the free SeatGeek app. Go to SeatGeek.com. We're also brought to you by Trunk Club. They find amazing clothes that fit you perfectly there. Handpicked by your own personal stylist. Not a subscription service. Order clothes wherever you like from your own personal stylist. Then take five days to try everything on. Returns are always free. Get started at trunkclub.com slash BS. Your personal stylist is waiting to help you with your fall wardrobe. Trunkclub.com slash BS. Don't forget about any given Wednesday, 10 p.m. This Wednesday, HBO. We have Wayne Gretzky, Bill Burr, and Larry Wilmer. Oh, that's fun. Hockey. I'm excited to talk hockey. Bill Burr. Good. Big Bruins fan. Uh, what a show. We also have uh, TheRinger.com and our ongoing Mammoth NBA preview. Welcome aboard to Roger Sherman. He's writing about football, college football, and basketball for us. He is a kick-ass Saturday college football column. You should check out. It's really good. I like it. Uh, don't forget about our other eight podcast feeds on The Ringer Network. Cousin Sal is here. Let's roll. I think this is our last time with Bach. Picture me rolling. We have a big wrinkle for year two of the of the music for the BS podcast. Really? Yeah. I can't tell it, tell you what it is. I also think this is the last time. This is the week eight podcast. Is the podcast we emotionally lose Bill to the NBA for the rest no. of the year. This is it. Enjoy, what did you call everybody. me? What's your sarcastic name the for me? NBA hole? What do I call NBA you? hole? <laughs> yeah. It becomes an NBA hole. <laughs> no. I, I, I'm I, really enjoying the fall of football. <laughs> and now I was just going to say, now we're going to talk about how, how football is, is over. <laughs> football had a Giants-Ram game in London that was an out-and-out out atrocity. They had a tie between the Cardinals and Seahawks, which was probably the most loathed football game ever played on social media. Yeah. It was like everybody's just lining. I'm amazed Obama didn't weigh in. Yeah, he might. And then what do we have tonight? It's Texans, Broncos, Osweiler against Simeon. You know that's going to be just a defensive right. showdown. And then Thursday, everything peaks. Ugh. Jags, Titans, live on the NFL Network. Get rid of it. Get that's rid the of worst. It. This everything is leading to this moment of Jags, Titans. That's not even worthy of a Thursday night game. That should be that should be Wednesday when everyone's asleep or something. That's <sighs> that whole division should just go away. It really should. And then meanwhile, yeah. your division, the NFC East, everybody's mm-hmm. over 500. I think the I NFC... I don't remember everyone being over 500 and going into week eight, like no, ever. It's hard to do. It's hard to do. And it's I also think the NFC, impossible. just in general, is impressive. Like every division has a wild card candidate, right? Even now with Tampa, uh, you know, in the West, obviously, you know, may not like Arizona, but I think they'll be there in, in December somewhere. Yeah, who would you pick for wild cards? For I think that tie really hurts Arizona. Like now they have to go nine, it six, really and does. one. Yeah, three, right? three, three, and one. Because I think ten and six is going to take it. So mm-hmm. they'd have to go. Yeah, nine, six, and one. And I'm not that ten and six is better. That beats it. Right. So what do they do? They have to go ten, five, and one. They have to lose two more and games say, all season. I say Eagles and Packers are the uh, are the wild cards. Well, we have. I mean, we've made history over and over again with with our gambling oh, God. bets that have fallen through at the last second. Mm-hmm. This one might take the cake. We bet on the Lions, the Browns, and the Niners collectively not to make the playoffs. Right. And you you texted me in August, and you were like, how does this lose? And I looked at it, and I said, you're right. This doesn't lose. Can't it's lose. impossible for this to lose. Mm-hmm. Matthew Stafford led three straight comebacks. The Lions <laughs> are four and three. They're atrocious. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I've watched the ending to these games. Yeah. I keep waiting for them to lose. They don't lose. And now this is going to be the week where everybody writes Matthew Stafford columns because I think he's, since the bye week last year, I think he's like 36 TDs and five picks, something like and that. And most to 100, quickest to 100 uh, touchdowns or something, the fewest games or so- something weird. But I think they're, as bad as this season's been for football, there are three bad, exciting teams. I think New Orleans, Detroit, and the Colts are bad, exciting teams. There and are, the Chargers are like decent exciting. I think they're good. <laughs> they actually I think might they're, be good. Uh, they should be like five and exciting. two. I do really think they are. Oh my god! The bad, boring is San Francisco, L.A., Cleveland, Jacksonville, and Chicago. But there are three bad, exciting teams. I think. 
bad, boring. Yeah. Well, the Colts have a good quarterback, and they're absolutely atrocious at every other spot, which makes them fun to watch right. week to week. So our loss was with the Titans. I think you were starting to say the, the we had the Titans. That was my cousin South Shore thing. Best bet. I bought it down to two and a half. I thought it was looking great. It was. They were driving. It was twenty twenty. They were driving with seven minutes left. They got conservative. They had a terrible like sequence of first, second, right. third down plays. Kicked a field goal, mm-hmm. and you knew luck was going to come down. Yep. And then all of a sudden they're down ten. We were lucky to be in there. They had, I think, the Colts had one hundred and thirty one penalty yards or something. They kept getting bailed out. Yeah, Mario they, they was dominated. Really the game. bad passes, getting bailed out by pass interferences or defensive holdings or or whatever it is, but. Just Mariota, I don't him. even know if he's worthy of an "Are we sure he's good?" conversation. I think, like in the I don't last, even want to have he's it. He's in the bottom third of quarterbacks he's we've really, seen in the last two years. To come he's, out, it's not accurate, right? The worst one is Case Keenum. Who, yeah. Now we have to really look at this Jared Goff thing and wonder how terrible he is that they can't play. Got to be. Case Keenum has the lowest QBR this year so far. I looked it up. I like looking right. like I I wait seven weeks and then I look at the QBR. He's thirty first. Right. Yeah. I mean the Browns guys aren't in there because they haven't qualified, but yeah, he's he's got I think. I think remember, I bet against him in each of his three wins. So and now I'm not a ben- able to benefit from these pick sixes. But let me defend him for a second, and he's atrocious. But let me defend him. They're winning ten nothing. There's a pass over the middle to I think it was Tavon Austin tips it in the air, and that Collins then takes it and runs it back. They're right. driving to make it thirteen or seventeen nothing. Maybe they put the Giants away there. But and then it just all fell apart. You throw two picks in the end zone, and I always thought they should have team interceptions. Right. Wait, can we go back to Sunday night? Sure. Are you happy with the NFL overtime slash tie rules? Should we ever yeah. have a tie? I'm okay with it. Yeah, uh, it's you're a, okay with a tie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we can make fun of how bad the teams are that they couldn't pull it out. I really like. I I barely watch college, but mm-hmm. I always enjoy when it goes in overtime. I think it's really fun. Wouldn't it have been more fun yesterday if they had college football overtime rules? Yeah, I think so. It just screws up the stats and everything. You know, I, I don't know. Just it screw. Oh, it screws like, up. Oh, it'd be bad for fantasy. Yeah. yeah like, well, oh, I like how yeah, you think. think about that. Like you know, like uh, you'll end up with the. Uh, with, with Reggie Cobb, will have more than more. Did I say Reggie Cobb? Is it Randall you know, Cobb? Oh, I gave it to you. Damn. <laughs> a little more touchdowns than Jerry Rice because he had four in the overtime in a four yeah. overtime game or something. You know, mm. be weird. Okay. Well, I don't know. I, I just don't like what happened game, yesterday. It was so bad. And you know, Collins worked worked so hard to keep the interest. Like, oh, I love I love the Smash Mouth football. I love it. I love the low scoring. It's like, all right. He's please. really turned. He's turned into a WWE announcer. <laughs> He really has the way he sells these matches. <laughs> so, oh, over the rope! Yeah, like he's just. I totally think gets at some it. point they need to cut the cards. Like, all right, this is a bad game. We understand. Al and I, we we have to mix it up. We're gonna do uh, crap game karaoke. We're just gonna sing. Like Don Meredith used to sing, sing right. in the booth, whether the game was good or bad. Like, well, you know, they've tried a comedian. Six, six. They had Dennis Miller in there, and then yeah. they had Kornheiser, who's not a comedian, but right. is like a reverent. Mm-hmm. Maybe they should have somebody who just travels with the crew, and then if the game sucks, they just bring Standing the guy by. in. Yeah. I yeah. like your guy, Bill Burr. Who Bill Burr would have been unbelievable. Well, be he, he might have soared a couple times on the air. <laughs> I don't know if he could have gotten through How that game. How could you help but swearing in that game? I mean, that it's not the death of football, but that was... That was a bad car wreck that we're gonna football's gonna walk away from last night. Well, and then bad. if if they're not gonna they're walking away, and then the Jags Titan car is gonna run uh, them over and kill man. everybody. And poor London, what we're doing to the, the there's another London game. So week. I started Eli over. Can I do my annual or yeah. my weekly? I hate fantasy football. Yeah, I started yeah. Eli over Russell Wilson because uh, I thought Russell Wilson was going to have a tough night mm-hmm. and Eli could not crack 10 points. And then no. Russell Wilson couldn't either. And <laughs> I might be done. I really, this might be it. This your, might be my farewell broke year. Your six broke 50 last night, uh, last week, this week. <laughs> I thought that was good for you. It, ter- like 62 it, it turns points. out building your whole team around Gronk and Ezekiel Elliott <laughs> doesn't work. But I mean, at the same time, like Joseph, a a jai, a jai. I know, I know. All these dudes, these people picking up, picking these guys up on Friday night to. uh, So I wrote down uh, the fan, some some fantasy stuff that jumped out. Matt Ryan, who you got for a dollar when everybody was half asleep at the end of our draft, leads the league with one hundred eighty-two point four fantasy points. Thank you. Legarrette Blunt is on pace for thirteen hundred rushing yards and seventeen TDs, and right now he's the sixth highest fantasy. Oh, non QB. Oh, I, I can't. Out of even all believe, the non QBs, he's six. I thought he'd be even higher. 
don't your know. top six non QBs: David Johnson, mm-hmm. Demarco Murray, mm-hmm. Lashawn McCoy, Zeke Elliott, yeah, Julio Jones, Legarrette Blount, who went for like Pretty the good. dollar. I mean, this is all so random. Good. This is the one that really gets me, and this is why I don't think I should do fantasy football mm-hmm. anymore. I had Melvin Gordon last year. I spent like twenty dollars on him. He had zero TDs. No touchdowns. He has ten and seven games. Yeah. Same guy. Right. Team isn't different. It's the same kind of shitty nine and seven, but yeah. kind of exciting Chargers team that they've had every year. Right. It's gonna have, he's gonna have twenty TDs. Yeah, it's bad. It's uh, bad. And then the other statistical thing I had to throw. Oh, David Johnson, by the way, is over a thousand yards combined mm-hmm. with they everything. Him. They give him the ball all the time. He went. He went for like fifty bucks in our league. Yeah, he was a big. And it was kind of one of those where you're like, you wanted to make fun of it, but everybody kind of wanted him mm-hmm. too, so nobody said anything. Yeah. So Tom so the, Brady, three and zero, a thousand and four passing yards, eight TDs, no interceptions, no picks, mm-hmm. almost ten yards per pass, and a one hundred thirty-two point six QB rating. Yeah. He's good. No, they made the right decision to start him when he got back. I agree. Do you think he can get in the top ten for passing yards? I haven't looked at it. He's. I looked at it. He's like about a thousand behind the tenth guy. Sure. But what? If he if he can make he's got uh what are you talking about? It's nine games. games left. Oh, this year? This year. Yeah. Who's the I he don't did, know. he'd spot the field four games and still be top ten in passing. Oh, yards. I see, I see. This year oh, I thought you meant overall. Like Tannehill yeah. Tannehill's in the middle. He's like fifteenth. He's got eighteen hundred passing yards or something. Brady's gonna pass right. him by the end of the year, but Right, right, right. I was I was actually I looked it up because I was thinking like, is there a chance Brady could win the passing yards title? What would the odds on that be? That's interesting. So if he throws, if he throws for like three hundred and twenty-five yards a game for the last nine, mm-hmm. that gets us to um, close to he, he'd be around four thousand. Somebody's going to throw for more than four thousand, right? Yeah. Matt Ryan will. Right. Breeze will be up there. Breeze will be up there. He's getting garbage. The, the um, what about MVP though? I think uh, Joe House liked. Like Brady for MVP preseason, I laughed at him. I don't think you did, but I I laughed at him. Oh, I I I got misty eyed. I loved it. Uh, Tom Brady, plus one twenty for MVP. What? Plus one twenty. Who are the MVP? Who else? Are David the Johnson ten to one. Ezekiel Elliott, he's the true MVP, ten to one. Aaron Rodgers twelve. I don't know where they get that. Matt Ryan twelve, and Luck eighteen to one. Wow. So if the Pats go like fifteen and one or fourteen and two. Yeah, you're right. He has a chance. Sure. I didn't even think. Nah, if Elliott rushes for like 1,900 yards and you get a one seed, he's winning. Well, why not take Elliott at 10 to 1 and Brady? Why aren't we doing that? Yeah, why wouldn't we? I, I know Dave, actually David Johnson. What a weird year. David How is Brady Johnson the MVP? Brady's the MVP favorite? He missed ridiculous. four games. Yeah. Guy who missed four games, David Johnson, who no one heard about ever a year and a half ago, and Ezekiel Elliott. Those, Those are, are your top, top three. three. Those are the top three. Julio Jones has to be in the mix, right? What if they go eleven and five and he has two thousand? Yeah, he's thirty to one. But maybe they, Stafford, they, they may just give it to Ryan. Stafford's our, maybe Stafford is the way we hedge our lines. He's bet. down the list a ways. In fact, I mean they're four and three, and he's he's one hundred and twenty to one. If you one hundred and twenty, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot of true people writing columns about him, but no one willing to put money on him. Um, I'm li- uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I guess Brady is the best bet. Because when you look at the AFC right now, who do you have as the second best team? I don't know. Pittsburgh, like Roethlisberger is going to miss five games. Right. And Landry Jones, the Pats, it took them three quarters to figure out that he was just throwing either lob passes or yeah. really soft line drive he's passes. He's a nice backup, but he's nice not going to make Eli Rogers and Sammy Coates great receivers like Roethlisberger does. You, yeah, you're right. Three quarters he's what Lombardi would call a 45-minute QB. Yeah. By right. the fourth quarter, he was out of ammo. The Pats like, oh, yeah, we know the two exactly. things you can do. Pat's second half was the bet there. We... I, 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 we, we can agree that the Pats are the best team right now, sure. right? It's not, it might not last, but after seven weeks, you'd pick them first. Right. We've no pass rush. Mm-hmm. And our offensive line had like six holding penalties in that game yesterday. And our kicker has missed a couple extra points and some field goals. And this is a guy that we've never had to worry about for 10 years. And yeah. something goofy's happened. I shouldn't have this many concerns about the best team in the league, which just makes me think the league sucks. 
Yeah, it, it's it hard. For, it's hard for me to believe the Patriots are the best team in the league. But you still have that formula down, where maybe even if there's a close game, you, you stay with them, and then Gronk, Gronk just breaks everyone's spirit. He just he makes the big catch. Might be for a touchdown, might not be. But it's like, wow, why? And you almost think like, why aren't they covering him? I still feel like in the league, there's like, why? I, I, it seems like teams forget to cover certain guys that they shouldn't be. Gronk's one of them. Julio Jones is another. Like, wow, how is that guy? Antonio Brown's over? another one. Antonio Brown. Yeah. I think is it just like I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to. He's gonna beat me, so I'm gonna pretend it's someone else's guy. I'm not gonna cover him. Like, it's very strange what goes on there. But Gronk is a spirit killer. He's got eight catches for over 20 yards already. Is that right? And he's only right. played, I think, three three full games. Yeah. We I watched with Kevin Brady, longtime Pats fan yesterday, yeah. and that Gronk touchdown, the way they lined up, I started yeah because I've played so much Madden over my life, mm -hmm. where you can just see what you know what Madden plays are going to work, and yeah. a lot of what the Pats run are like the it's the best Madden offense with the tight ends. So they lined him up on the left on the inside. Mm -hmm. And you could see the Steelers didn't have it covered. They didn't. They didn't have somebody. And you could see that the numbers were wrong. And I was like, Gronk over the middle. Gronk over the middle. But yeah. I thought he was going to go in. Mm -hmm. He just went straight. Yeah. And it just seems like that plays there twice a game. A little shuck move, and that's it. It's yeah. Insulting. It's just the the one time the safety falls asleep, or mm -hmm. they ran another play in the first half where he was on the left side with two receivers. One just went down the sideline deep. Edelman ran a button hook across the middle and then Gronk kind of cut in. Like they, every, they took out everybody and just had Gronk one on one. Mm -hmm. It's unstoppable. Yeah. But I don't know if button I don't hooks know. go they, across the, the middle, but I know what you're saying. I know. What's the, what's yeah. the one over the middle where, where the guy swerves? It's not a button hook. Yeah. It's a uh, slant route. What are you talking no, about? No, like the, the deep slant. Yeah. The yeah. post route. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got my football terminology <laughs> screwed up. Do it's you right, hate J.H.I.? I hate J.H.I. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like when people come out of nowhere to swing fantasy leagues. Well, that's the whole thing. I'm looking at him as a fantasy player, and the guy I was playing this week, my scumbag friend Harry, picked him up, like, not even the first, not even Wednesday night, but Thursday night. Uh, and, uh, yeah, just 27 point. What did he have? Something crazy? Dallas Philly is Sunday night mm -hmm. against what game in the World Series? Four? Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Five. It's tough. It's the best football game they've had all year. And the Cubs could be up 3-1 at home trying to win the World right. Series. Wow. Unbelievable. Baseball wow. gets its revenge. <laughs> <laughs> this, is t this is a good time to, to debut crap game karaoke. And no one's watching. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do. We're going to do the Week 8 lines. It's good. And idea. then we're going to talk about the World Series. And then we're going to do a couple NBA future things i got to talk. So, But all before right. we do that... Our friends at Squarespace make it easy to build beautiful websites without breaking a sweat, regardless of skill level, no coding needed. Not only does Squarespace provide easy to use tools, Squarespace's state-of-the-art technology ensures security and stability. Millions of people and some of the world's most respected brands trust Squarespace, so you should too. Not only do you get 24 seven online support, you can even design a best in class online store with Squarespace's award-winning templates and customizable settings. And with Squarespace Commerce, you get all the tools you need to track inventory, process orders, send custom emails in one intuitive interface. Start a free trial today at squarespace.com. Use offer code BS to get 10% off your first purchase. <laughs> uh, all right, week eight. Let's oh, do it. We have our uh, our Don Julio shot of the week, which for it's the only thing I'm winning every week. You're I'm, killing it, and I'm, I'm just getting, killing it. I'm getting murdered. Don Julio, the world's original handcrafted tequila with multiple unique tequilas, including Don Julio 1942, the best luxury tequila you will ever drink, and the tequila that Dan Sambor drank before he fathered two of his seven kids <laughs> to, to loosen himself up. Those are conservative estimates, but I think you're right. Yeah. <laughs> so we can either pick for the Don Julio shot of the week uh, tonight's game, mm -hmm. which is Texans at Broncos. Right. Or you can roll it over to Titans Jags. What is the Broncos line right now? I was just gonna check that. Um, the Broncos are laying eight points. Oh wow, that's high. I don't think the Texans offense is gonna be able to do anything. Mm -hmm. Like not one thing. I really think it could go badly. Well, let, let's guess the Titans line first, and then I'm going to make the okay. Don Julio, because I don't know what that line is. Jacksonville, Tennessee. Thursday night. Thursday night. Do you think they should use different announcers for this? 
Yeah, maybe. Uh, like, why don't they use their worst announcers for this? I think they're going to have trouble finding people to announce these games. <laughs> I think the <laughs> announcing crew is the announcers are revolting. They're just not going to show up one day, and that'll be that. It's but, too bad this isn't going against the World Series. I've seen, I swear we've seen this exact game four times this year already. But I know. I have the Titans by four, a little high. You said four. I said five and a half, really high, especially after watching them. It's minus three and a half. Minus three and Tennessee, a half. Tennessee, three and a half. Ugh, Bortles on the road. He's two and fourteen lifetime on the road. Blake Bortles, do you know that? Is that right? Yeah, he's two yeah. and fourteen. Wow, fourteen of sixteen times he has lost on the road. Did Gus Bradley solidify? Because there were two two coaches that helped themselves out. Mike McCoy, big win for the Chargers, helped himself out. Uh, who else? Oh, uh, well, Rex Chuck Ryan saved his job. Yeah, but he's he's not good. Yeah, but I, think I'm, about. The, I'm saying this week, McCarthy. Was you know there was McCarthy yeah. stuff if they had blown that Bears game right. they lucked out Brian Hoyer broke his wrist I think the Bears were going to beat them yeah I don't think the Packers they are look, good they look bad they look bad but the other coach uh, Chuck Strong Pagano also oh yeah saved Pagano was in the mix so right now I think Gus Bradley has a stranglehold on first coach was fired. there a no coach gets fired bet that we could have done Ooh. I'm, I'm saying they before the year before the year because I don't know if anyone gets fired because Jim Caldwell was another one everybody was talking about and Bradley, he's not getting fired Bradley's minus 200 Chip Kelly 4-1 oh, they'll, they'll, yeah, they'll let him that stay. team's Pagano, awful Pagano 10-1 Caldwell 15-1 like you mentioned Fox 15-1 that could be interesting uh, McCoy also 15 and Malarkey 20 I don't think anyone gets fired and not even Jeff Fisher guys made 50 million dollars coaching <laughs> And but he, you it, know what you sign up for with Jeff Fisher. Uh, they're right where we, they're who they thought. I who was so. the Dennis Green line? Yeah. They are who we thought they are. <laughs> uh, they're three and four, and they're going to go eight and eight again. They go, go eight, eight and eight It's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, uh, the most an unimaginative offense uh, I've seen with that team. I am. God, I don't like either of those games. You know what? I'm going to. I'm going to take pass. the. You can't pass on the Don Julio shot. Of the no, week. I know. I'm going to. I'm going to throw it down with uh, the Broncos minus eight. Interesting. I don't okay. think I, eh, you know what? You're going to change it. You want to do yeah, a shot? I'm going to take, I'm going to take, it? I'm going to take the Jags. Nobody should be favored in any. Wow. AFC South game. All right. I'm staying. I don't think that were, that game is worthy of Don Julio or not, not even Don Knotts. I don't think that game is. So you're going, Bron of. you're going Texans. I'm, and I think I agree with all your reasoning. The Broncos should win. This is a, a revenge game against Osweiler. Uh, they have had 10 days rest. The Texans are awful on the road, as we've seen. The pay, they lost, they got shut out in New England. So I'm taking Houston because nothing makes sense. Houston plus eight. So we're both I going on both of these games. No, no. I just think t Titans Jags is a three point game. I get a free half point. Right. The the Jags do have guys on defense that I like. Why didn't why and they might be all better over, off playing on the road? We should have been point. all over the Raiders. Speaking. Of Better teams well, we on bet, the road. We bet on. Uh, oh, you mean betting just this yesterday? Week. How are they four and I, on We the got road. scared by the line. I think it was Jags were favored by one and a half. We know the Raiders are better. What are we doing? I don't know. The, right. the Jags were for some reason frightened me a tiny bit, and I, I wish I could. All right, now back. listen. You did it again. Washington at Cincinnati, technically, but this game's in London, and I know you didn't realize that because Th there's another London game. This is it. This is the third London game. Washington and Cincinnati. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, I, I'll redo that pick then. Um, Go ahead. What do you think? Nah. Cincy by four and a half. All right. See, you're going to get it. It's not fair. You had six originally. Now you go four and a half. I said one. It's three. Oh, so I barely so won So you that. win that one. Wow. So they only think the Bengals are three points better than the, the Native That's Americans? That's very strange that they're going to have... Yeah. And actually a good game. Could, does London have to let these teams in? Like, what, what's their border? Uh, <laughs> what's their policy at the border? <laughs> Some of my soccer fans at the Ringer were saying that the, the Premier League is stacking really good Premier League games to uh -huh. go against these NFL oh, games. Wow. It's like, I don't even think you need to do that no, Premier yeah, League. Yeah. These games are yeah, terrible. I think your you got daughter's game would, about. would rate the same. Can I just say before we go further, this week collectively, because you've already submitted your line, so... The lowest spreads I've ever seen in a game. The lowest spreads. There's not one game over seven. There's two at six, and everything else is lower. If you added them up, I've never seen. I any. think that I think everyone's just quit. Yeah. So just looking at the Bengals really quick. 
They barely beat the Jets in week one. Mm -hmm. They should have lost. Lose to the Steelers in week two. They were down double figures the whole game. Mm -hmm. Got a cheap touchdown near the end. Got killed by the Broncos. They beat the Dolphins on a Thursday, Thursday night, night. Yeah. Which I just almost feel like you throw out the Thursday night games. They're so stupid. Get killed by the Cowboys. Get killed by the Patriots. And then this week, they beat the Browns, who had some guy I've literally never heard of in my mm -hmm. life, Kevin Hogan. Yep. Um, came in. He's their sixth quarterback to throw a pass this year. There's no sign that Kevin the Bengals Hogan. are good. <laughs> so maybe that maybe the uh maybe that Washington line is fair. I guess it is. I mean, Washington's four and three. Right. Yeah, it shouldn't it should be very low, whatever it is. But the, they're it, four and three and they could have won the Lions game and they could have beaten your team, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it has potential to not be a hideous game. But the miracle win of gambling win of the day was uh Cincy minus eight at a half. And they throw a Hail Mary to A.J. Green. So oh, that covered it? Wow. Yeah, congratulations if you're on that. All right, Jets at Cleveland. I have a theory on why everybody's missing extra points. Yeah, Because people me. are like, why is this happening? This makes mm -hmm. no sense. I think during the games, the extra points were almost like practice for the kickers. Right. So they just go out, they bang in their extra points, but it's like a rep. So then when they have a real field goal, they're out there. They get a feel of the crowd, all that. Mm -hmm. Now it's like every time they kick anything, there's pressure. There's no rep. Right, right, right. It's just you're out there. It's like, yeah, you're thinking about the crowd, the thing. And there's no easy kick anymore. And I yeah. think these guys are psyching themselves out a tiny bit. Whereas before, it's like you go out. Mm -hmm. You just bang in the extra point. Oh, my, yeah, my foot was off. I mm -hmm. got to fix that for. Right. So it's almost like golf where you don't have a practice swing. Well, I was going to say almost like I hate to bring, bring up basketball because you don't like talking Please about do. it. But oh like a free God. throw if you move the back six feet. Like uh, I think that would be about – maybe not even six feet, but guys would miss a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I don't know. I don't know if I'm right. I, 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 I don't know why they're missing 19-yard field goals, though. I mean, that was – they took the five-yard penalty, Arizona, right? In why not go for it one more time? I don't know. I, the, it was third the Cardinals, down when they, they go for it twice, and right. then they kick it. It's like yeah. either go for it all three times Get or don't go for it, but don't right. half-ass go for it. Right. Oh, they were so close to getting in, too. Uh, Jets at Cleveland. So we should mention six teams off this week. Yeah, that's too many. Rams, Dolphins, Niners, Giants, Ravens, Steelers. I would argue all six of those teams are delighted to have a bye week, except for maybe Miami that had a little momentum from the Bills right, game. Right, for sure. The other five definitely are, are fired up for the bye week. Five of the six are either three and four or four and three, and then there's San Francisco at one and six. We had an old idea from a previous podcast that I really liked mm -hmm. that obviously didn't work this week, but when there was six, six teams off like this, mm -hmm. they don't have any early games. Or they don't have any late games. This is the week where you All just stack everything. They basically and then we did. can hang out with our families. They basically did. There's two late afternoon games. And what are they? They are San Diego at Denver and Green Bay at Atlanta. See, those are good games. Mm -hmm. Why only two? I mean, it's not up against the World Series. That's pretty weird. I go three or, or none. I'm with you. Jets right. at Cleveland. That, that could just be off the slate altogether. All right, yeah, we didn't talk about Cleveland. Cleveland has a real chance now at 0-16. Mm -hmm. If they don't win this one... You like Kevin Hogan? No. What you gonna do when 12 <laughs> for 24 with two interceptions is coming after you? <laughs> I got this, brother! <laughs> Jets this week. Dallas at Baltimore, Pittsburgh Giants, Cincy at Buffalo, San Diego at Pittsburgh. I don't. It doesn't even matter where those games are being played. That's I don't Jets, think. The, no, that these oh, are I'm all sorry. the Cleveland, yeah, Cleveland games. games. Yeah, I would say the best. That last month is brutal. Cincinnati at <laughs> Buffalo, San Diego at Pittsburgh. They're yeah. not winning any of those. It's games. all brutal when you're Cleveland and everyone else is the other team. True. <laughs> they have, I would argue, three more chances to win a game. This Either is this one of them. Week, yeah. At Baltimore two weeks from now on a Thursday night. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Thursday nights are weird. Yeah. And then home for the Giants. I mean, that could be like. What's their last one? Could someone possibly be sitting players? It's at Pittsburgh. No, they'll need Pittsburgh's that. Pittsburgh's going to need it for they'll something, it. right? Yeah. Unless. No, they won't lose at home either. Yeah. Yeah, they'd be going for a two seed, three seed, right. something. Mm -hmm. But holy mackerel, we might have an 0-16 team. Well, Vegas Vegas doesn't isn't counting them out this week. So you had. I had the Jets by. By four. I had the Jets by six because 
you, you can only give so much credit to a team who's trying to lose. But yeah. Vegas has it two and a half. Jets by two and a half. Soccer bet. Who do you like? I don't know. I'm, I like to stay away. That's a soccer bet. I like the Jets. What are you talking about? We have to stay away. We have... <laughs> The, I have the four worst teams in the league are the Jets, the Bears, the 49ers, and the Browns. You don't put the Jags in there? I have the Jags as the fifth worst team in the mm -hmm. league. You have the Jets and Browns playing each other, and then you have the Jags and the Titans playing each other. I have the Titans as like, yeah, I mean, that, they, that want, whole they want badly awful. in that group. Yeah. But just two, those are two of the worst games we've had all year. Yeah. And I would, I would say do not lay points and win two bad Stay teams. Stay away. Stay away. Yeah. Seattle at New Orleans. Interesting game. I put Seattle by three and a half. It's just the Saints are dying to be taken here. Yeah. Right? I said three, and it is three, so I get that one exactly. If the, if the Saints defense can't get the Seahawks offense going, mm -hmm. then we should have real concerns here. Right. They're one of my bad, exciting teams, though. Watch yeah. this game. This will, this will be a fun game. Um, Arizona at Carolina. This was also once a fun game. <laughs> Panthers by two, I had. You're going to get it. I had Arizona by two and a half. I think I made it before the end of that horrific game last night, but it's Carolina minus one. So if Carolina wins this, they're two and five. Coming off a bye, right? Going to LA the next week. Mm -hmm. After that, home for the Chiefs, home for the Saints on a Thursday. And then they go at Oakland, at Seattle. I don't think there's any way they make the playoffs. I have to see. You I think they're a complete cross-off. Something out of their secondary first before you could Would say you cross them off? Because I have five cross-off teams right now. The Browns, 49ers, Bears, Jets, and Saints. I'll wait one more week. but And even if they win, I might cross them off this week. But I, I don't think. Uh, talk about kick-starting an offense. I think Arizona will now score some points at Carolina. I think the Panthers... I th we both agree 10 wins to get in the playoffs in the NFC. Mm -hmm. So they have to go 9-1. and one. Yeah, God. Impossible. Their they're defense isn't good enough. Nope. Wow. Um, real quick, ratings down 11%. I don't know if you've discussed this on any of your other podcasts. What NFL? Do you, and NFL ratings. What's the biggest reason? I talked about it oh, you did. with Michaels and Costas on Wednesday night. Oh, right. And I yeah, laid yeah. out the oversaturation theory. Yeah. I think that's the biggest reason. But There's Michael said it was the games they got unlucky with. And and they, he, he, he was just talking that. Sunday night. Yeah, I think the I think it's like eight factors: the concussions, Goodell. We didn't even congratulate them for uh, uh, raising awareness for women this month. Yeah, that's right. The NFL. I mean, if you look at it, if you spin it positively, they yeah, raised awareness for true. for domestic violence against women. So right. congratulations to them. I, every time I saw the pink jerseys and the shoes, it's nice. That I can... thought of Josh Brown. Oh, you right. know, keeping a journal about all the times he beat his wife up. Right, yeah. And, you know, that that's great. Good job, NFL. Yeah. Way to, way no to go. no hypocrisy there. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. But I think, what about those people that say, I'm not watching because of Kaepernick? I don't believe that people are canceling their direct TV because of Kaepernick. <laughs> Honestly, there are people that say that. Like, uh, they, they canceled their package because of Kaepernick. I don't, I don't believe that. I think you can underestimate people over 70 for anything. Not really? for one thing. Yeah. Wow. So I think, think there are people over 70 who are like, this guy's not going to stand up for the anthem. I'm out. Mm -hmm. Just like, I think the NFL's lost a lot of female fans, and they should have. Mm -hmm. The way they have handled women this decade, there's no way that hasn't at least slightly affected the number of female fans that they have. I'm with you. Yeah. Like, you look at what they did this week with this Josh Brown thing. To, to go through this after they already did this with Ray Rice two years ago, to then have this happen again... In just as callous of a fashion. Mm -hmm. First of all, I didn't understand why he was on the team. Like, just get rid of him. You have to get treat rid of him before the season as, as a penal code thing. You did this, you get this. You did that, you know. It's a kicker. Who yeah. cares? Just right. get rid of him. Right. Um, that goes to show you how under the, under the radar these kickers are. It's like, well, what, what it really goes to show you is the NFL is held in so low of a self esteem mm -hmm. right now with the general public. Right. And they once a year they get caught in something where they just either flat out lied or they just completely mishandled something. Yeah. And you look at it and you go, how did you, how did you not handle this correctly? Mm -hmm. It just doesn't seem hard to handle this Josh Brown thing correctly. Yeah. The way they handle it, it's it's like Keystone Cops. Right. 
And then, which I, I don't want to go through the flake gate again, but it's just funny. Like the one time America's like, no, the NFL was right. was with Tom Brady, who's mm-hmm. never done anything in his life. Well, Greg Hardy is practicing extra points right now. Let's put it this way. Once he saw how the kickers are on the Seriously. Yeah. What like, about the guy in the Chiefs, Ty Hill? Go Google what Ty Hill did at Oklahoma yep. State. Yep. So, uh, but I'd say that I don't know if this is the number one factor, but, you know, in the last couple of years, people say, I watch the Red Zone. I just have the Red Zone channel on the background, and I'm with the kids, and that's how I watch games. It's like, okay, that's good. I, I could never watch TV like that. I couldn't watch the games. I have to have the eight or how many yeah. screens up. It might not be a legitimate factor now. Maybe that's I think why it, I think it's a factor. I you agree. Did, right? Like a lot of people watching this Red Zone channel. I used to, the four TV thing, which I had never really seen in action until I moved here and our mm-hmm. cousin had it. Yeah. And I just loved it. I was like, wow, this is the next stage of football. And really now you just need the game you're watching, toggle back and forth with another game and have the Red Zone on. You really only need two TVs. Yeah. I had four going yesterday. It didn't matter. Like the Vikings Eagles game was atrocious. Mm-hmm. Had that on one of the TVs. Yeah. You know, then if something gets good, but there was, again, there was only two good games yesterday. Right. Chargers Falcons was really fun. Mm-hmm. Pat Steelers wasn't well played, but it was compelling. And yeah, you know, and that's another thing is, is stars. Mm-hmm. Wilson's one of the five biggest stars in the league. Mm-hmm. Is he? Is it that much fun to watch Russell Wilson play nope. football? Tate, do you like watching Russell Wilson play football? He's shaking his head angrily. No, he's ruined my life too many times. What he's about Cam Newton, Tate? He's Cam another Newton's one. fun. Is he fun? What? But yeah. I know, but they're one in five. Like maybe that's why all the <sighs> stuff Tate is true. He's really bad. Falcons are fun. I mean, just go through all the teams. Yeah, Pats are fun. Uh, all right. Uh, hold on. I'm trying oh, to find God. more, fun, more teams. fun teams. Did you say the, the Raiders? Chargers are fun? The Raiders are fun. Falcons, Raiders, Cowboys, mm-hmm. and Pittsburgh when Ben's in there. So that's well, when you six say, teams that are fun to watch. You say fun. I think there are 20 offenses that are still out of sync in week seven. Like that's right. that's what's weird. Maybe it is the preseason and how it, how slow things are and no two-a-days and no everything else. But That's I think a that's big fair. part of this, uh, the, just what happened with the salary cap and how Kevin and Brady and I were talking about it yesterday about how you, you don't keep the guy on the team for those last two years of his career anymore. Mm-hmm. The veteran, the guy who knows where to go and what to do. Like right. in the mid-2000s, Troy Brown's not on the Patriots in 2000 when we won our last Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. He's already off the team. Yeah, He's replaced by a seventh rounder. And, and now they're I, sticking around. I had this idea a while ago. I thought it was like one of the 11 best ideas I've ever had. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> I really do. I think... You should be Best re- ideas out of that. <laughs> Number, Number seven. <laughs> be a great, great countdown show. <laughs> Number 11. Uh, <laughs> with the salary cap, you should be rewarded mm. when somebody's been on your team for a long time. Not just that you picked them, but that the guy panned out and there's some loyalty in there. Like, how long has Jason Witten been on the Cowboys? 12 Forever. years? Yeah, I think it's 12. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think so. Right in there. So they should have an escalating bumper thing. Like after eight years, his salary only counts for 85% of the cap. Well, this is NBA, right? No, the NBA doesn't do it this way. I'm saying like, I'm saying the longer you're on a team, the less your salary actually counts against the cap. Mm -hmm. So Brady, you know, who's been on the Pats now for 16 years, maybe you make it that his salary only counts 50% of the cap. Mm -hmm. Every year it's another 5% off. And then, you know, you have guys who can retire with teams and there's a little more loyalty and there's veterans. Yeah, and- why isn't that NBA? Isn't that what they do? You get you get rewarded for signing your own, re-signing your own free agent? Yeah, but it counts against the cap. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. you, you have advantages for the years you can I add see. to the deal. Mm-hmm. But this is different. This would be like Jason Wooten's been on the team 13 years. We're paying mm-hmm. him $10 million, five counts against the cap. Like he should, both teams should, both sides should be rewarded for right. that. And if his 40 is under uh, over seven, seven and a half seconds, that should also count. It's 40 Quick, yard dash. Quickly, we're going to talk about Indochino. Oh, yeah. Every man looks better in a suit. Every man, including our cousin, who started wearing suits for uh, Jimmy Kimmel Live. When? Uh, when did he start wearing the, the well, suit he, with the tie? The full. It's funny because we were discussing this. He, he was behind the desk for most of a year. Did he have a suit on? He, once he, he started he without the, the tie. And then he came, did the stand up, but still without the tie. And then he wore the tie. Like, yeah. Gave in. Well, why get one of those generic off the rack suits? 
Try Indochino. It's one of the largest made-to-measure menswear brands. Let them help you find great-fitting, high-quality suits and shirts at an incredible price. Here's how it works. Visit Indochino.com, I-N-D-O-Chino.com, or drop by one of their nine North American showrooms. Pick from hundreds of fabrics and patterns. Choose customizations. Submit your body measurements. Then kick back, relax, and get ready to step into the best, most stylish suit you've ever worn in just four weeks. This week, my listeners can get any premium Indochino suit for just $389. Go to Indochino.com as long as you enter BS at checkout. That's 50% off the regular price for a made-to-measure premium suit. Shipping is free. Satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Indochino.com. Promo code BS. I like it. All right. New England at Buffalo. We made it to your game. So do you think the Bills aren't that good, or did they wilt in the Florida heat? No, I think you're right. And I Should also, we start looking at the Florida heat as a gambling factor? Because that, that happened in the Packers-Jags week one, too. Yeah. Remember how hot it was? That'd be smart if we started looking at it. Let's no, start looking at the weather in, more. In November. Yeah. <laughs> Florida heat. 85 degrees. No, I know. Games. But I just, uh, maybe they were looking ahead to this game. How much better would this be if Bills were 5-2 and two and the Pats were 6-1 and one and they already have a win over you? They should be. They shouldn't ever lose to the Dolphins. I had the Pats by four in Buffalo. Um, Might have gone low. No, I think you said four and a half, didn't you? No? Four and a half, whatever I yeah, said. I said four, and you did go low. It's six and a half. We both went low, so you win that one. Six and a half. It's the highest line of the week. Six and a half. It's a bad, that that run, like that, all that stuff is bad for the Patriots. Mm-hmm. I think if the Steelers had to do yesterday's game over again, they should have done more. I, I, was D'Angelo Williams hurt? Yeah. He was hurt. That that helped us yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, they showed him on the sidelines. They figured a out times. what Bell was gonna do. Is Bell this is a, by the way, Bell is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, even I mean even, he's he was amazing in that game. I don't know what his final stats were, but every single play he got three more yards than he should have the box for the four and he still, quarters. He still got three. He was incredible. He's excellent. Now, is this if Belichick is to circle one game on the schedule, isn't this the one? Yeah, you don't well, also we win the division if we win this game. Yeah, and we have you a don't three game lead. I'm sure he prides himself on not getting swept by anyone in the division. Yeah. This is you so bring all the horses. It. So that, that I think that's why there's an extra two points in there. The other thing with this game, to get through this one, it's smooth sailing on the road the rest of the year, except for at Denver week fifteen. Toughest home game is Seattle on a Sunday night. Mm-hmm. It's this is a scary it's a, team. It's a again. fourteen and two if they win this I game. Hate it. All right, Oakland and Tampa Bay. It's a good game. My two favorite teams. My two favorite preseason teams. <laughs> I have the Raiders by two. I think you almost have to judge the Raiders on the road like they're a home team. Sure. Undefeated at home. I had Raiders by two also. It's a pick. Okay. Give them, give them the Bucks a little credit here. The Bucks up. were down 14 in that yeah, game. That's, and then they that's just, their problem. They, yeah. put, they beat San Francisco. I don't know. They have, they're in the stretch of three home games now, Tampa Bay. Oakland, Atlanta, and Chicago. And then they're next year at KC, Seattle, and at San Diego. I don't know what to make of the Bucks. I have no opinion. Yeah. I do think Jameis throws it up for grabs a little too much. Yeah, I don't know with Tampa. I, I, I think they're the... the you don't know what you're getting with... Like they're, they're the knuckleball pitcher of the totally. NFL. They're the... The Tim Wakefield, like because they they were good one game doesn't mean they're going to be. Yeah, that's the next. true. They make it nine runs. The, the Tampa the Wakefield. Yeah. Um, can you believe how many running backs just can come in and do well? No, like it's Jack weird. Quiz Rogers and mm-hmm. Joe Ajay, Jay Ajay. Yeah, Jay. Who Joseph Ajay? <laughs> Jay Ajay. <laughs> yeah, that's what we want to say. I can't even get the Reggie Cobb thing. Right. Kristen Michael, <laughs> Casey at Indy. I know you can't tip your picks for a right. Cousin Sal shirt thing. This, to me, looks like one of the locks of the year. I don't know what the final line is, You're but I had KC. the Chiefs one and a half. I just think the Chiefs are considerably better than the Colts. I said Chiefs two and a half, and it is Chiefs three. Yeah, I should have gone higher. We should probably bet that before it keeps going. By up. the half point, down to two and a half? Doesn't I, matter I continue to think the Colts are terrible. I did too. Just awful. I and I don't it. know, y- yesterday they had this, you know, Malarkey's a bottom five coach, but mm-hmm. they had this clear 
offensive decision they were making where they're just like, we're just going to throw over the middle of the tight ends mm -hmm. and we're just going to cram it down. And Jack Doyle, you've probably never heard yeah. of him, but he's going to have a huge game. And it was clear what they were doing pretty early. Yeah. And the Titans were, oh, they threw the tight end again. Whoa, didn't see that one coming. They couldn't pressure luck. No, you know, they couldn't. When you can't when pressure luck, you're not good. I'm not talking about the game show of the mid 80s pressure luck. I said they couldn't pressure. Right. Luck. That's what I meant. But he yeah, had no. twenty, like twenty-four sacks going into that game, and yeah. they had no pass rush at all. Yeah, exactly. You know what a terrible win. division. Meanwhile, oh a great division, and I think the best. I think the AFC West is the best division right now. Yeah, the, the AFC West or NFC East. Yeah, your all your teams are over five hundred. Look at the AFC West: Broncos plus one seventy-five, Chiefs plus one seventy-five, Raiders plus two. Raiders are in first place, and they're plus two fifty. Chargers are fifteen to one. I like are that they really? division. Yeah. God bless the Chargers. Fun. Oh, the San Diego is really mad about the piece we did last week. They were? Yeah, really? they were mad. It's so funny. They, they, what do you mean? Oh, the team is mad. Yeah. Well, the city. No, the whole city. They were like, the whole don't city? you know, you're not from here. Don't tell us we were. Really? It's, it's what they don't realize is what happened with the Chargers is, or what's going to happen with the Chargers is what happened to the Padres. They're like, it's tax free. You guys won't have to pay for anything. Right. But if the economy turns, they can all of a sudden go, hey, our bad, you're going to yeah. have to pay for stuff. And right. they can just flip it. Like It's not a binding contract for the rest of eternity. Yeah, right. They can yeah. just be like, hey, we need the money, so we're going to... Yeah. Oh, let, them wait, let them waste their money then. Let, them be, let them be mad. <laughs> but what's funny is their biggest argument is, hey, it's a hotel tax. It's the fans from the other teams are going to be paying it. It's like, mm. so you're going to build another stadium right. to get fans from other teams to come to the football games? What's the point? Yeah, We're going to have 20,000 Bears fans here. It's like, great. Why are you building a stadium? Right. Just go to LA. Make the two-hour drive. Build it around SeaWorld. No one's going to SeaWorld anymore because it, 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 build a stadium in there. That's L true. You make something good out of something bad. San Diego is such a beautiful place. I know, like, why I do they it. care if they have a football stadium? That's where I'd want it's to settle down. South, 10 football games and four concerts a year. It's right. 14 dates. I watched your bit. I saw And they have yeah. a convention center already. <laughs> Everyone's happy with the old convention center. Yeah. I, I hate this stuff. I don't know how excited people need to get about a new stadium. It's unbelievable. I will say the Vegas one, which is also reprehensible. Uh, yeah. Just that, that whole thing is just as bad. Mm -hmm. But at least like having a football stadium in Vegas makes a modicum of sense and also you know what you're getting involved with the raiders like yeah the raiders are ripping you off if right. they're involved in any <laughs> deal so 50 year history right it. it's a, but but vegas you're getting ripped off going to vegas too so that's it you the thing with the football you. stadium in vegas is it would lead to super bowls in vegas which mm -hmm. you could make a case like if if you're las vegas that's a shitload oh, of money God, right? yeah. that's millions of people coming in it's and ridiculous. betting at the casinos like yeah. you have to do that for sure yeah. and also like i don't love their uh convention setup in Vegas? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's it's like a... Kind of old. Kind of old, and yeah. it's just you're walking forever and maybe a stadium. I think it would be a lot of fun. Yeah. Detroit at Houston. Here we go. Texans by four. You're going to get this. I went Houston by five. I thought this would be the end of Detroit's run. It's uh, only three. Houston by three. I like Detroit. Yeah, a lot yeah. of... I don't know. Every year we see one or two teams that just every game comes down to the wire and there's no rational explanation for it and you just have to ride it. And right. this year it's the Lions and it's the Chargers. Line. Yeah. Those are the two. Just, the games are going to go to the so fourth quarter. So take the points. Houston yeah. on a short week. Yeah, maybe. All right, now two late afternoon games. Only two. San Diego at Denver. Broncos by five and a half. All right, I hit this one exactly. Broncos by six. Mm. Let's see what happens tonight. I, I love that. when the Chargers play in Denver. I don't know what the stats are, but it mm -hmm. just I, I just have this vague memory of every year being mad that I didn't bet on the Chargers as the announcers talk about how much Phil Rivers loves playing in Denver. Taking the points. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Phil Rivers loves playing here. <laughs> but just They score in, points. Their offense is rarely stifled, even when they're overmatched. They have that they have, he has a lot of nice bailout passes. Phil yeah. Rivers over the middle, the your favorite Melvin Gordon or whoever oh, else. Like, that guy. They, that guy they, can go straight to hell. <laughs> their offense is good. Could you believe Gates dropped the pass over the middle that he's caught 7,000 times? Yeah, but he would have gotten hammered anyway, right? I was know. The but one it's with, just, yeah. I, first of all, I can't believe he's still in the league. And second of all, mm -hmm. he's caught that pass for since I was yeah, in college. You're right. you're right. Was that the worst? Uh, we're getting to this. We could do this now. Green Bay at Atlanta. Was that the worst call of the year for Coach Quinn? Fourth and one, 46-yard line. Where was it? Midfield? Well, 
All right, so this is what bothers me about football advanced metrics. So they lay out the case of like, oh, the winner expects to see in the and the defense and their defense isn't good, but right. it's it's all fine. I concede all of those points. My yeah. problem is with the plays they did. I said the same thing. Third and short one and fourth and short one, and instead of spreading everyone out yeah. and doing three receivers uh, and a tight end and whatever, yeah. You're running a goal line offense on third down and fourth down. It's it's idiotic. Your your biggest weapon is Julio Jones. You have to at least make it like there's a possibility you might throw to him, even if you don't. I mean, the way they did it, they all came crashing the line. Yeah, they knew what was coming. Get three receivers, mm -hmm. get your tight end, spread right. them out, get five D backs on the field, mm -hmm. and then run. You can get a yard in two tries if you do that. You yeah. the, your goal line on the 40 yard line is this is the same thing that Pat said. I remember I wrote a column like seven, eight years ago and they went for it on fourth and two from the run 28. Right. And it wasn't the, it wasn't just the math of it. It was the fact that we ran a shitty play. The play calls always the thing yeah. that does them in. Yeah. So, right. I'm the same way. And now, now he's made this, uh, Quinn has made this division interesting when they could have had like a one and a half game lead. Yeah. What do you have? Green Bay at Atlanta. Falcons by three. You get it. Exactly. I went a little higher. I said three and a half. That seems fair. Three. Before we do the night games, mm -hmm. how often do you get takeout? 12, 13 times a week. A lot. You have three kids. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. Uh, if you signed up with Blue Apron for less than $10 per meal, Blue Apron will deliver all the fresh ingredients you need for a delicious and a healthy home cooked meal mm -hmm. for you and your brood. My kids love fresh ingredients. It's I like, know. stop talking about the fresh ingredients already. They have the high, well, Blue Apron has the highest standard for, for ingredients, and they build a community of home chefs that has no rival. Some of the meals available in October, crispy chicken millionaise mm. with warm Brussels sprouts, celery, and potato salad, Thai green curry chicken and squash with jasmine rice, cashews, and yu choy, whatever that is, mm -hmm. roasted pork steam buns with black garlic mayonnaise and spicy cabbage slaw. And then November, it's a whole new batch of meals again. You get your first, to get your first three meals for free with free shipping, you just go to blueapron.com slash BS and they start showing up at your door. Nice. And then your wife doesn't have to cook for everybody. I know you don't cook. I've never seen you cook in my life. Well, no, I don't cook. And I think you're going to think this is a joke, but this could be why ratings are down 11% because everyone's on Blue Apron. Like they're just enjoying their meals. Oh, yeah. I don't that's care right. what's on TV. The fresh ingredients. Yep. Well, Blue Apron is a much better way to cook. They say it's a better way to cook. I say much better. There you go. All right, night games. All right, Philly at Dallas. Here wow. we go. Wow. <laughs> I love it. <sighs> Man. <laughs> Cowboys 6. Yeah, uh, you know, of minus course, I, I went way lower. I went minus two. It's four and a half. Dallas, four and a half. They put it in the Vegas zone Sunday night. So Vikings-Eagles, I love the Vikings all week. I just thought their defense was going to completely throttle the Eagles. And I actually was right. I didn't realize that until... That was a weird game. Bo the, both Lots of plays in the end zone, both end zones, and it was still like 0-0. Zero, zero, it like. didn't seem like the Vikings were just going to win. Like, first of all, interception, the guy mm -hmm. gets tackled on the one-yard line, and right. somehow they went backwards and they Bradford threw the pick. But I, if the Eagles went up, or the Vikings went up 7 nothing, I think the game's over. Right. I don't know if the Eagles would have scored. It's a strange game, and they went for two, the Eagles. I know that the yeah. penalty put them closer, but what, what does 8-3 get? Like, I don't know. And it, Whole and it thing worked. was nuts. It was very strange. But I didn't realize until this weekend how bad the Vikings offensive line issues were yep. and I got nervous about that pick because I was going to I was going to bet on the Vikings on Sunday I got nervous I backed off I might have talked you out of it but uh, you can only win so many games with a very very average and I think that's a, a, a generous uh, depiction offense and McKinnon went out early I think yep. and then you have a, a gimpy Stefan uh, Stephon Diggs. Diggs yeah so uh, I don't know Sam Bradford well here's the issue Mm -hmm. Sam Bradford is not durable. Right. If he's going to take hits like he took in that Eagles game, yeah, that team's not going to make it. I think the Eagles had that game uh, circled. Is that Sam Bradford calling? No, it was Sam, Sam was furious. Yeah. They but, had, they, that was a revenge. Yeah, but that's fine. But so the, the Vikings, like, we would be like, oh, they're in. Yeah. Put them in. I don't know. I, I don't know if Bradford's going to last behind that line. Mm -hmm. And... When you look at what's happened to the other skill guys, and then you look at their schedule. There's going to be some games where the defense doesn't score a touchdown. That's just how it is. So they go at Chicago, Detroit, at Washington, Arizona, at Detroit on Thursday, mm -hmm. Dallas, at Jacksonville, 
Indy, at Green Bay, Chicago. See, the best thing that happened to them was they got to play the AFC South. And they have the Bears twice. And they have still. the Bears twice. So they should be able to get to 10 wins. But I don't know if they're getting 10 wins with a third string quarterback. So they got to keep Bradford. So they're the minus field. 160 to win the division. Would you take a chance with the Packers at plus 140? I would if I liked the Packers. Yeah, they're bad too. I, you don't like where I'm going to go with this. What? Lions. I, what are the Lions odds? 12 to 1. You're crazy. <laughs> well, it would be a nice hedge against our no playoff bet. <laughs> and then they'll win the wild card and we'll lose both. <laughs> I don't think the Vikings can win 10 games with a third string quarterback. The I just Vikings? don't think they're going to be able to score 14 points he's a, a game. He's a third string now, you think? No, if Bradford got hurt. Oh, I see. I see. If he got hurt. Yeah, well. Yeah. I don't like his durability behind that line. Right. It makes me nervous. Oh, and the Packers, just so. Because it's a lost game. But so I had up, the Vikings by seven in Chicago on Monday night. I had night. seven also, and it's plus six. The Bears are plus six. So who won this week? So you won eight to three plus two ties. Ever since we moved to Mondays, I've been killing you. Yeah, but it's over. It's over. We, uh, what do you mean it's yeah, over? Yeah, you got basketball now. You're going you're gonna to be checked out. What are you out. talking about? Let me just read these lines down to you. Yeah. Three and a half, three, two and a half, three, one, six and a half, pick, three, three, six, three, four and a half, six. So Those we have no line over eight? No line over six and a half. New England, Buffalo, six and a half. Minnesota, Chicago, six. And Denver, San Diego, six. So we've never had them that low. We uh, there's a wager for NBA quickly. Go oh, to yeah. NBA. Will the Warriors win the NBA championship? Yeah. Minus one fifty. For yes. For yes. Yeah. Which means you can bet on all the other teams mm -hmm. in the league at plus one twenty. You can for you can bet a thousand dollars, not that you would. Let's say a hundred mm -hmm. on twenty nine teams to win the NBA title, and if any of them win, you win one hundred and twenty dollars. I just want to point that out. I would like to bet this, but I have a vote uh, this year. Stop! As to you're being, being a <laughs> dick. You're it. being a dick. <laughs> it. I am. Uh, but let me ask you this: so they would have to suffer two major injuries to not make the conference. It's the playoffs. Anything can happen. No, but I know. But maybe take maybe we wait on this bet because they're going to make the conference finals, right? And then at that point, they'll be minus I, two. I don't know. I think the Cavs are going to. My if I had, at gunpoint, point, if I had to make a pick, I would bet on LeBron again. Really? Yeah. This is where he separates them. Yeah. Uh, and you get everyone else as well for plus one twenty. Mm -hmm. It just seems like that a crazy fun. bet. I don't I don't get that. That is fun. That's like the Tiger Woods. You could have Tiger Woods versus the field in his heyday in the U.S. Open, and you get similar odds. What do you think, or maybe if you know the answer, tell me, mm -hmm. what is a Cavs-Warriors finals? Uh, one to six? No. Uh, I'll say, all right, so if the Golden State's minus 150, two to one. Tate, what do you think a Cavs- Warriors finals. What do you think the odds are for that? It's like four to one. Too high. Uh, Tate doesn't. We gotta get Teach Tate gambling. <laughs> Tate's young. He doesn't know any better. Plus, it's I minus know, like, 175. Uh, well, how is that? Minus 175. That's not a real thing. If Golden State's minus 150 to win the whole thing, it's minus 175 for that exact matchup. The next best odds are Cavaliers Spurs at plus 600. Mm -hmm. Celtics Warriors are 13 to one. Cavs Clippers are 20 to 1. Mm -hmm. And everything else is higher than that. Right. That's interesting. Well, you did have us bet the Celtics at 30 to 1 to win the title when uh when I thought we were getting Al Horford or hopefully, Kevin Durant. Hopefully Durant will land with the Celtics. I don't know. MVP odds have moved a little. I'm looking at these now. I'm not allowed to bet on this, but LeBron is now the favorite at 4 to 1. Mm -hmm. Westbrook's 5 to 1. Steph Curry's 5 to 1. James Harden's 8 to 1. Kawhi's 8 to 1. Boogie Cousins is 10 to 1. <laughs> Who blocked me on Twitter. I'll never forgive him. Steve Kerr's choice, Damian Lillard, 20 to 1. Wow. I would, you can't short these, but I would short Steph Curry. He's not going to get credit, MVP type credit anymore, right? I, mean, I, think, I think you just cross him off. I would bet LeBron. LeBron. I would. You like Harden too. Points, points leader is Harden at. at Plus two fifty and Westbrook at plus two fifty. Mm -hmm. Nobody else is going to be in the mix. So you basically, you could just take both of those. 
Right. And if you bet a thousand on each, you lost one. Basically, you're getting plus one fifty odds on them against everybody else. Right. I don't see anybody else competing with those two. All right. I like that. The only one. No, I don't see it. I don't see anyone else. And you like Brad Stevens at ten to one for Coach of the Year? No, I do have a Coach of the Year that I like. Oh, you do? Yeah. Uh, Brad Stevens at ten to one. <laughs> Well, it's all regular season, right? So if they won, how many games? Fifty-three. Uh, nah, man, they, he'd have to. They'd have to really overachieve. They'd yeah. have to be like in the high fifties, something like that. Mm-hmm. The only other one I wanted to mention was the East. The Cavs are three to one. The Celtics are eight to one. So Cavs are minus th- three to one. Uh, yeah, th- yeah, uh, minus three hundred. Yeah. Celtics are eight to one. Mm-hmm. Toronto seventeen to one. Atlanta's 30 to 1. The Bulls are 30 to 1. Wow. And the Pacers are 35 to 1. Mm-hmm. The Pacers' odds are out of whack. I'm not saying they're going to win the Eastern Conference. Right. I'm just pointing out that those odds are not correct. What about Knicks at 40 to 1? That could be fun for a minute. It could be fun if you'd like to set money on fire. You're, you're rooting. You're just betting on a LeBron injury, right? At that point, right? For anything. Yeah, but the thing is. The NBA of any sport has injuries that sure. swing the finals year after year. It That's happens true. over and over again. So anytime this is too obvious, right. I'm always trying to think like, all right, you know, Toronto has trade possibilities too. They have like, like that's a Boogie Cousins team potentially. You know, that's a team that could make a move to uh, upgrade majorly. Seventeen. Weird one, though. Please. It's it's the least exciting um, before the season gambling. Yeah, universe I've ever looked at. It's basically just like Cavs of Warriors and That's everyone one of those else. Too, and, yeah. yeah. <sighs> Let me ask right. you this, real World quick. Series. Oh, okay. I was gonna, I was gonna ask you about what. It, it turns out the most horrific thing on TV last night was not that Arizona Seattle game. Walking Dead. Yeah. Did you watch? I did. I haven't watched for two years, and I, I DVR'd it, and I fast forwarded through to see who died. Why? Why would you? What do you? Why? Let's do World Series. Right, then we'll end right. with Walking Dead, right. just in case people haven't seen it yet. So World Series, the Cubs are minus two hundred. Oh, it is two to one. Wow, they're officially two to one. And then, can you bet? Oh, exact total games. They have total games. I don't see the total games. I think no this total is a games. no win for baseball fans or fans in general. Like, I think you go to, if you're a non Cubs or non Indians fan, you go straight to hell if you're rooting against the Cubs. <laughs> you go to hell if you're not rooting against the Well, the Indians Indian, have a better have to, case because they won the NBA title to be like, ah, yeah. oh, they got, at least they had the Cavs. I know. I hate to tell you, but a lot of people don't care about basketball. Like, people what? are like, no, they're a baseball fan. There are, there are Indians fans who aren't uh, LeBron James fans. This is, they've been waiting forever. I couldn't believe the cut that 1945 when I looked up that that uh, Donald Trump was born in 1946. Right. And Before he's lived his whole Indian. life since the last time the Cubs made the World Series. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Since it made like, it. Like when yeah, you right. think, it's always like, oh, they have one since 1945. But then when yeah. you think about how, like, how old's your dad? He's 75. Yeah, same thing. 1941. Yeah. It's yeah. just like when you think about how long that is, it's insane. It is a long time. And, uh, it just, I told you this when we were walking over here. I don't watch National League until October. Mm-hmm. And then I watch everything. And I, was, I just think the Cubs are amazing. They do seem like they They're have so it together. Good. But I, and, I, and we were also discussing the Indians. There shouldn't be home field advantage in baseball, but the Indians seize on it. They really do. They, before you know it, you're down 2 nothing against them because they, against your Red Sox, the Blue Jays, were, their bats were hot. They shut them down. The Andrew, Andrew Miller, Miller Trump card is That's the, it. it's the yeah. big one. I think you can hit their closer, though. Yeah, I I, fe- I felt like we could score on him. We never totally got through on him, Alan, but I, yeah. I don't. I feel like we can get him. The thing with the Cubs and this happened with the Red Sox too, and mm-hmm. you know it was definitely one of the reasons we won in 04. Mm-hmm. We had a lot of people that weren't from here on the team, and then a lot of crazy people like Damon and Millar. But like, <clears throat> yeah, if you're if you're if you're uh, Orlando Cabrera or David Ortiz or right. Manny Ramirez, like, do you give two shits that some team that played in Massachusetts hasn't won the World Series no. since 1918? And it's the same thing with this Cubs team. They have a bunch of young guys 
they have this mix of people that are American and people that weren't born from here. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what does Javier Baez care about some curse? But is, that's better, right? That's for the better team? for the Cubs. Yeah, sure. yeah. They're, they're more focused on actually totally. playing the game. Like yeah. in 86, when the Red Sox lost to the Mets, like mm -hmm. we had our catcher was Rich Gedman. He's from Worcester. Yeah. This right. guy, like he's, his whole life he'd been hearing about the Red Sox and the, you know, he had Bob Stanley and all these guys who were aware of what was going on. Right. And then you go to 04 and it's like Johnny Damon doesn't know where he is. Exactly. You know, that moment. Pedro's bringing a, a little person around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ortiz and Manny. And right. Like none of these guys bounced off him. Yeah. And it feels like the Cubs remind me of that. Same I don't thing, think they're huh? going to feel the pressure. Let me ask you this. I say, I know they've approached him and he doesn't want anything to do with it. I say you get Bartman to those home games no matter what. I don't think. I get think, him there. I think. Do what it takes. We did that big 30, 30 for I him. I know. We great. tried to get him. And I really think like he's so traumatized. I think he loved the Cubs. Yeah. The only way I could. Sit him in the upper deck, but have him wave to the crowd you know, where, where we can't cause it would be like problems. if you screwed up the only Cowboys Super Bowl they yeah. ever would have won. Right. You just wouldn't ever you'd you'd be think how traumatized you'd be. Uh they have to make it right though. I think they have to win and then he'll come back. You think so? You know, nobody they kind of alluded to this and the announcers ran from it because I think Joe Buck Joe Buck was great on Saturday night. I think he realized that the Cubs fans don't want to hear about the old stuff. He learned mm -hmm. his lesson from O four. By the way, it's but, tough to call a, a potential double play ball as I the, know. right? Out, it could, could be out. could be safe at first. Right. Could be, it could be a lot. You don't want to you don't want to miss fire on it. It was one not. of the best ones. Yeah. But in that ninth inning, they hit a foul ball into the Bartman seats. Right. Yeah. They said I, I saw it. And I've been waiting the whole game for the moment when the Cubs fans were gonna their sphincters were gonna tighten. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no way they didn't tighten on that. It was like yeah. the exact same spot. And I'm watching. I'm like. <laughs> oh no, that's a bad sign. Like I just, you know, and then they, all of a sudden it was over. They but did mention it though, right, Buck? It they like, they this, alluded to it, yeah, and yeah. then they kind of ran for the like right. Smoltz was like, "Oh no, that's not a good place for that ball to be hit." And then right. they just kind of ran away. Right. But that so was so stupid. weird that five that happened. other guys went for that ball. It's, uh, so, it's so bad. It was so weird that they hit the ball to that spot mm -hmm. though. But do you think the Cubs Saturday night? You think Chicago? Jacko thought that was the drunkest night any city's ever had. Oh, interesting. Yeah, most number highest number of drunk people per residence. It didn't seem like they wanted to go home anytime soon. It it's was such a carry happy place. The weekend. Yeah, you've been to Chicago a few times, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's great. Such a happy, nice place. It's Everybody's nice. so pleasant. It'd be great for them. Everybody's got It'd three drinks in them. Mm -hmm. So, I like the Cubs. All right, it feels I would, like I destiny. Go, I would go with the tribe. You plus, like the you like it in the odds plus one seventy. I think they win the first two and Cubs bats. Go a little cold like they did against the Mets third week in October last year. I think uh, the starters that the Indians have, unless Kluber can pitch three times, he'd have to go one, four, and seven, right? Mm -hmm. I just don't see it. I don't think Danny Salazar can just come back from the injured list and immediately – throw six innings you can't pitch miller all the time the thing that's going to kill them is that three four five yeah they're not going to be able to pitch miller in all of those games yeah, that's true so unless you just throw one out i don't know all right it's interesting what do you want to plug walking you do this dead week? no walking dead talk forget oh it. yeah, yeah oh, walking matter. dead doesn't matter uh, so yeah i hadn't watched for two years yeah i told you i broke up with the walking dead yeah i know but it was that... just too unhappy yeah and then i was reminded why i broke up when uh when I watched the ending, and I watched two people br brutally beaten to death it with a barbed wire baseball bat, it was the toughest hour of television ever. I mean, it made it, it made the the red wedding look like uh, Peppa Pig or something. Right. So it, was, it was ridiculous. Like my wife grabbed me, I was like, "Oh my god, what's going on here?" Like we we had to look away for a couple a couple times. And you hadn't watched in two years, so you're not emotionally invested in these characters. But it was so. How did you watch it? You were. I just wanted to see who died. I knew all the characters. Yeah. I knew the guy, uh, the bearded guy. What's yeah. his name? Uh, the guy who got the I first guy who got right, beaten right. up. The hillbilly, yeah. That guy. Uh, uh, so that's with an A. Um, very surprised they took out the Asian guy. Did not see that one coming. But I think they just wanted to show everyone else in the cast, like, look, don't you guys ever band together and uh, try to get like a salary raise or anything because yeah. we will beat all of you to death. But it was so bat. perfectly done because. So before they show who was killed, the, first of all, Harry Dean Morgan, he's, he's the best bad guy ever. Yo, so, good actor. Never so really intense. had his like, breakout role. I like that so guy. So intense. But then so, so uh, Rick is going through the flashbacks of who 
might have died. Yeah. And you see Glenn first, the Asian guy, and you're like, oh, he died. But then they do it for everybody. Yeah. And then they kill the hillbilly. Like, okay, Glenn is safe. And then, sorry if I'm spoiling something, they kill Glenn. It's like, oh, my God. Wow. They really they brought it all back. It was so well done. So well done. I think uh, that show is too grim. Yeah. It's just a tough. It's just tough. It's never going to end. I, apparently, Glenn died in the comic book that way. I read. Yeah, I think so. But I don't know about the other. Guy. I, I think like my friend Scott has a funny thing about the the first episode of Walking Dead every year is great. The last episode is great, and then everything in the middle is like, I'm going to go far. I'm going to go get some food. It's like, I'm coming with you. You can't come with me. I am coming with you. Okay, fine. That's it. And then every, you go to a grocery every store. Episode, yeah. And oh then, my like, god! Oh no! Like, don't don't go oh, in that door! Oh maybe. my god! There are zombies there. Maybe she shouldn't have come with you. How did uh? How did Rick's son lose his eye? I thought he was accidentally shot. Uh, right? That was years ago, right? If Rick's son gets killed, I'll come back. Oh, but the, the Carl. arm and everything. You want him dead? <laughs> I had a little thing about how Carl was into necophilia. <laughs> that was what I, it's just how Carl's like he's had such a dark life. Yeah, Carl right. was going through puberty. Yeah. During this, like he's got nowhere to pleasure oh, yeah, himself yeah. or there's no chance for women. And he's just gone off the deep end with that's good. Zombies. I think that's how the comic books do it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, do your stuff. The uh, Cousin Sal sure thing. Check in on Friday. Seven and two over my last three weeks. Nice. Two and one last week. Still up around $1,400. Jimmy Kimmel Live. Barack Obama on tonight. Whoa, the president. Yes. The POTUS. It's going to take me two hours Holy to get to work mackerel. from here. But um, yeah, it's fun. Gordon Ramsay, Felicity Jones, Jimmy World, Andrew Garfield uh, later in the week. And... You can get me on Twitter at the cousin Sal, or you don't have to, whatever. <laughs> whatever you want to do. We have a Keeping It 1600 live show on Thursday, October 26th in Los Angeles. It's sold out. It's presented by SeatGeek. But thanks to Stitcher, you're in luck, listeners. On Friday, October 28th, you can listen to that live show exclusively on Stitcher, completely free for the first 24 hours it's up. And we'd also like to thank Truck Club. Remember, they find amazing clothes that fit you perfectly, handpicked by your own personal stylist. Not a subscription service. Order clothes whenever you like from your own personal stylist. Take five days, try everything on. Returns are always free. Get started today. Trunkclub.com slash BS. Your personal stylist is waiting for you. Don't forget about any given Wednesday, 10 p.m. Wednesday night, we have Wayne Gretzky, Bill Burr, and Larry Wilmore. I Don't forget to show. check out. Yeah, it's a good one. Don't forget to check out TheRinger.com. In our ongoing Mammoth NBA preview, guess who's writing tomorrow for The Ringer? Writing? Me. You are? I wrote a column. Hold on I came out of retirement. Hold on. Are you sure you want to do this? Yeah, I did. I wrote it. It's handed in there. Really? It. Yeah. You don't have to do this. I wrote an NBA column. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I'm back, baby. Don't forget about our other eight podcast feeds on The Ringer Network, including The Ringer NBA Show, which is now be going to become very valuable during this awesome NBA season. That's it. You're going to beat me in the guest lines the rest of the year. I agree. I just had to buy my time. Now it's mine. You're excited for the Warriors deep down. It'll be fun, but it has to be something like last year where they could set a record. Otherwise, it's going to be boring, isn't it? They might have a game where they hit like 45 threes. Wow. There really might be some insane game. Wow. They might go like 45 from 60 <laughs> from three in a game. Like that, I think it'll be more stuff like that. I think their game should be one quarter, just so a team has has a chance to maybe win. Like, yeah, we won 22-19. Well, <laughs> it's you get like a point. That's it, yeah. yeah. I do think they have a chance to have a 100-point half, too, would wow. be the other thing. Because it's just math. Like if they hit 23s mm -hmm. and a half... Get some free throws. Yeah. Like you could very easily climb in in the 90s. And it's then the I, if they started going for it with a minute left. All right, because right, go good job by you. Good job by you, Bo. Anytime y'all want to.